Hey guys, the FM Gaff here, and welcome to episode 6 of my Improving Irish Football series. Now today, uh, we're a couple of, about 5 or 6 games into the new season, and yeah, uh, I'm going to live com this, uh, I think it's home against Dundalk today in the league. Um, so, uh, we've been in a couple of other competitions, the All-Ireland Cup, which is when uh, Northern Ireland and, um, I and Republic of Ireland clubs come together to make a competition. Um, we've played that already, and I'll let you know uh, let you know how we did in a minute. But first, transfers. Okay, on the outs, just a load of players that we, uh, yeah. Well, those were just a load of B team players that were just rubbish. Genuinely, just crap. Um, they were like max one and a half star poten potential slash current ability. Um, Richard Purdy's gone out on loan to Wexford. Rob Cornwall and Luke Byrne, two young. Full backs, uh, Rob Cornell, right back, Luke Byrne, left back. Their potential was like three, three and a half star, and they were good player. Their potential was good player in the Irish Premier League, and that's what we're looking for right now. Um, we're looking for a bit better. Brandon Mille wanted uh, came to me. He was like, um, I actually only released him yesterday. Uh, anyway, um, yes, he came to me and he was like, I'm not getting enough first team football, so I was like, I'll play you, and then I didn't. Then he said it again, then I said I play you, then I didn't, and then I was, I was just like, I'm never going to play you, and I just released him. So, um, yeah, that's where he's gone. So, in terms of the outs, we got some good, good, good deals. Roy O'Donovan, this was a great deal from um, the Singaporean side, DPMM. I'm sure many of you would have heard of them. They have no players. Um, but yeah, they had um, Roy, uh, Roy O'Sullivan, uh, Roy O'Donovan. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's like, yeah, he's been around um the english leagues and yeah he's just a pretty pretty good player for irish premier division standards i'd say and yeah he's he's done all right for me so far um after that we have these two dutch players abil shocker and samia ulani uh, my scout came to me with both of them and they've got yeah really well-rounded attributes um as you can see there and yeah most uh, the both of them are currently star players i think uh so abil and then there's samia ulani uh, he's a leading player, so fair enough. But can he get better? No, but he's, he's still a good player. Um, then we move on to the loan signing. So, yeah, we extended everyone's loan apart from Robbie Crawford's. Couldn't get him again. Um, but they say the maximum is uh, five loan transfers per season. Um, so, because we already extended them last season, we got five more. So, we've used three of them. Um, Dia Natan Te Teixeira, uh, who's on loan from Stoke, he's a fantastic star player. Uh, and yeah, he's, he looks like a really good player at centre back, uh, better than Kenna and Sean Heaney. Um, Calm Camps is a midfield slash attacking midfield player. Um, yeah, he's potential to be a star, but right now he isn't that great. He's good for us, so yeah, he's more of a backup player. Um, Brian Lenehan, a uh, great right back. He's been playing every match from right back, and then Simon Madden has been sussing at centre back quite a lot. But yeah, look at those physicals. That's just immense. Yeah, like stamina 16, jumping reach 3rd, uh, doesn't really matter, pace 12. I mean, for this level, it's pretty good. And yeah, it's defensive, um, marking, passing, tackling, all good. Heading could be improved, but, you know, um, I'm not picky. So yeah, Brian, Brian Lenahan looks like a good one. And yeah, that's all, that's it. So, if we look at the schedule, uh, this is what's been happening so far. The Satanta Cup is the All-Ireland Cup, as I mentioned before. So first, I'll go through pre-season. Uh, Waterford, we, Waterford United, Conor Kenner with the only goal of the game. Then uh, we won the first leg of the Satanta Cup first round uh, against Portadown, who is Gary Twigg's team. Um, I think I mentioned him a couple of episodes ago. Mark McAllister actually put Portadown ahead, but uh, two goals from Amond, then Gary McCabe and Roy O'Donovan with the goals, um, giving us the 4-1 win. We then won another, another game 4-1. Uh, this was Cobb. Cobb. Ramblers, Cobb Ramblers, <laughs> great name for a team. But yeah, uh, we went ahead through Liam Kelly. They pulled one back through Ado Adi Andy O'Connell. Then uh, three goals from Ryan Brennan, and then in the second half, Amund and Potts. So yeah, quite an easy victory in that preseason friendly. We then won our second leg against Portadown, uh, two one. Suarez put them a front, but Amond and O'Donovan's late goal um, won it for us. We then beat Galway United in another preseason friendly away. Uh, David O'Leary's own goal gave us the lead. Martin Waters then doubled it. Tech Shera did get sent off, but yeah, we still hold on for the win. 
We're going to beat Shelbourne away from home 3 0. Uh, Shane O'Neill in goal before Graham Burke and Mikey Drennan's second half goal sealed the win. So, we're going to start off our league season with a 2 2 draw, unfortunately, away at Longford. But Longford are doing amazing. They're top of the league. They've won six out of seven games and drawn the other one, which was against us. Yeah, so um, they're doing pretty well. Uh, we're second in the table currently, but we've got two games on hand. So we would go to 17 points, which is two points behind Shat Longford. Uh, for those of you who can't count to two. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Longford have done really well. So yeah, getting the draw. Uh, we were 2 0 up though, which was pretty disappointing. Liam Kelly and Mikey Drennan give us the 2 0 lead, but Reese Gorman and Kaleem Simon coming back. We did then beat them though in the EA Sports Cup a couple of days later. So yeah, Graham Burke giving us the lead, uh, Liam Kelly doubling it. Uh, Shannon getting one back just four minutes from the end, but Texera winning it in the 93rd minute. We then had another 2 2 draw against Sligo Rovers on this occasion. Uh, Liam Kelly smacking home the penalty. Morton Nielsen um, equalising it up. And then, uh, yeah, David Corley giving us a lead from an own goal. And then Richard Cretero just after half time um, drew le Sligo level once more, and that's how it stayed. We then drew 2 2 once more against Linfield um, so yeah we uh, went ahead in this one Roy O'Donovan with it uh, Peter Thompson scored twice to give Linfield the lead um, which was pretty worrying and then Liam Kelly got the equaliser um, so yeah we were sitting in a bit of a precarious position going into the second leg um, but yeah we then faced Derry City in between we beat them 3-2 this could almost have been 2-2 again uh, Liam Kelly and Mikey Drennan's first half goals uh, giving us a 2 0 lead Tim Lynn and Curran Brought them back to 2-2, but Liam Kelly straight away scored their R third to uh, win it for us. Similar kind of structure to the goals um, in this match against Linfield. We went 2-0 up. Liam Kelly and Mark Hoffey own goals, uh, giving us a 2-0 lead. Waterworth and Morrow getting back to 2-2. And then once again, it's Liam Kelly with his second of the match late on to win it for us. And that took us through to the semi-finals, where unfortunately we did go out, as you can see. But I'll go through that in a second. So yeah, now uh, this time we lost. Uh, we sorry, we won uh, two one against Drogheda United. Sean Thornton, Thornton, who I think I had him in an Abbey Swift save. Yeah, um, yeah, he's a good little player. He, for some reason, he went to the Welsh, the Welsh Premier League when he was still quite like good. <laughs> I mean, he was well capable of playing for like a League One club. Um, so yeah, I had a save with Abbey Swift that he was a big part of, and then yeah, he went down a league to Conwy. Then uh, now he's in the Irish, obviously, league with a uh, drug edder. So, yeah, he's been around, but nevertheless, uh, where were we? So, yeah, he gave drug edder the lead, but then two goals from Amond, either side of half time, uh, won it for us. We then lost our first leg of the Santa Cup semi final, which is unfortunate, uh, which is a bit bad. <laughs> Can't think of a, for lack of a better word. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, Chris Forrester and two from Killian Brennan. Now, at 1-0, I did go attacking. I forgot it wasn't a league game. And this may have been the cause of the two late goals. We, sh sh we sh should have scored at least two in this match. Um, we then beat them. Yeah, we played some patties uh, three three games in a row. And the one that counted in the league, we did get the victory. Uh, Liam Kelly giving us the lead 90 minutes on. Ryan Brennan getting sent off a minute from time. But yeah, we still held on for the win. So, in this second leg, I completely went for it. We should have scored four in the first half. Genuinely, four opportunities that I would normally expect to put away, but no. Uha Ulani then got sent off, unfortunately, three minutes after half time. Um, and Forrester gave him the lead, but yeah, I kept on attacking, I kept going. Uh, Kelly equalised, Fagan made it 2 uh, 1 to them. But then, yeah, Amon equalising once more. And we, yeah, I think we could have one or two others in the final 15 minutes as well, which was just ludicrous. We, sh we actually, despite the 3 0 advantage they had, we sh still should have won. Um, but yeah, that's life. Um, so yeah, today, I bring you to today's game against Dundalk. I was kind of saving the live com just in case we got to the Santa Cup final. But yeah, I'm just going to do this Dundalk game, which is on Friday night. So as I mentioned, we are second in um, the Irish Premier Division, um, which is, yeah, not bad at all. Um, and we've got a couple of games in hand. So yeah, that should be good. Um, so yeah, they can see all our results so far. We started off with two draws. We're doing much better now. We've already got Sligo and St. Patrick's. Possibly the uh, two best teams other than us in the division out of the way, getting a win and a draw out of that. So, if we just keep winning now, uh, hopefully we'll keep winning until the end of the season. That would be a dream scenario, but unlikely. So, yeah, I've just got to move on to the Dundalk game. We aren't quite there yet. 
um, which was yeah, a mistake by me. But yeah, um, if I, for those of you that were interested, uh, the Shamrock Rovers B team, who I stopped managing after a couple of games last season, I'm just gonna go through this. Hate, I'm just, I'm just, at this point, I'm just like I, d I don't care about press conferences. <laughs> um, but yeah, the B team, uh, what I've got on the schedule. Last year they did completely awfully and lost most of their games, finished last. But this year they're doing much better. So yeah, they've won, they've won a game uh, against Finn Harps. They've drawn three and then yeah, they've done well. So I'm assuming they're not last. They are not. They're sixth. That is fantastic for Shamrock Rovers B. Um, I, I'm letting a lot of like those kind of players like Danny North um, play for them and uh, yeah they get I think some of the players that I had in the team were worse than if we had loadout players last season <laughs> so yeah now that they've all been released as you saw in the outs uh, of transfers um, yeah it's a much better situation so uh, Gary McKay, Michael Lennon and I'm currently going to be allowed to play for them why is Gary McKay not fit? he's got 90% match that's not really lacking match fitness I guess I'm not really minding him g uh, playing for them. Uh, does that mean he's not available for us? No, he is. Okay, I guess he just won't play for them. Um, so yeah, today uh, I've just quick picked that. Uh, definitely not. For some reason, it keeps the assistant whenever I quick pick. It wants Thomas Tiernan to be up front, but I don't get it because we've got like Roy O'Donovan on the bench. Patrick Amon Shocker can play there too. It's just yeah, really weird. Um, well, I've just remembered. Um, I keep. Uh, trying to do this, I'm going to train Simon Madden to be a centre back. Oh, he is. But he's not a centre back. Ugh. What? Ugh. He's been playing centre back mainly. The last season he was right back, and it says it says his playing position is centre back. But it's not anything new, so I don't get that. But yeah. Um. So yeah, Simon Madden. Uh, is I guess so. Yeah, I'll just submit the team then. <laughs> Wait. Did I change it? <laughs> oh, I've just submitted it just randomly. I didn't really look at the rest of the team other than O'Donovan bringing in O'Donovan in up front. But yeah, it looks a fairly normal team. Um, so yeah, Mikey Drennan, Gary McCabe, Liam Kelly. Good front three there. Um, yeah, hopefully we do well. They're playing a flat 4-4-2. Um, we've been going on a good run recently. Continue it and Roy O'Donovan's pretty happy with that. So yeah, Mountie. The, oh, uh, for the um, yeah, Keith Farr. He's been injured recently, so that's why he's not playing. Uh, some of you may have seen on the squad view, but yeah. So otherwise, he obviously will be playing. He's my pretty much key player. I've made him captain, which pissed off Connor Kenner, and that is why he's unhappy now, Connor Kenner. But yeah, not that bothered. I mean, he's not that great, Connor Kenner. Um, I can probably release him at the end of the season. Roy Donovan with a the chance there, winning the corner. So it's now Liam Kelly to swing it in. Teixeira was in there, but yeah, it's been cleared out. So, um, just a thought that I was having a couple of hours ago <laughs> in real life, but yeah, um, I was thinking that uh, if we got to the Europa League group stage, and we scored a Rogers own goal, well, if we got to the Europa League group stage, we'd receive probably about, I think, I think it's about a million and a half in prize money, which would really help our fin financial situation. Literally, they never give me any transfer budget. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know what happened there. Webster sort of hit it in and Rogers has like punched it up into his own goal. Uh, not sure, but yeah, we are ahead, which is always good. Uh, McCabe now, uh, looking for Amon, but couldn't find him. And Drennan's stolen that! Go on, Drennan! Oh, good save and towel clears it out. So it could have been two there. Playing relatively nicely so far. Oh, please tell me Longford are losing. Ah, oh, they're drawing against Derry. Go on, Drennan. O'Donovan, Longford are, oh, they've just come up from the first division, they won the first division I think, so yeah, they'd be pretty good winning the first division than the premier division. Here's O'Donovan, Craig, Camps, McCabe, O'Donovan squeezes it in, and it is 2-0, Roy O'Donovan's fourth goal of the season, a uh, good turnout from him, Camps with a nice little ball into Gary McCabe, here, put it in low to the front post and the just like hits O'Donovan basically and goes in. I'm sure he meant it, I'm sure he meant it. But yeah, uh, so a 2 0 lead and Tech Show has won that, but it comes back to how Kaguaku now, McMillan, O'Connor, Gamble, Mountney, in towards McMillan and Potts. Oh, Potts, what are you doing? Luckily, Gamble missed a key opportunity for uh, Dundalk. 
so we remain with a 2-0 lead which is good and it looks like we're going to have the same lead going into the half time break so I'll say uh, don't get complacent uh, a couple, one player looks stressed I think it was Kelly but most look confident Camps now into McCabe uh, Pops Kelly gone McKay whip in gosh oh, get in the box a uh, back clears Pops will win that yes Pops he finds O'Donovan O'Donovan uh, loses to Barrett that comes straight back to Pops Camps McCabe McCabe to Craig up to Lenahan into Drennan Craig Camps go on O'Donovan and O'Donovan gets his second 3-0 oh no he doesn't it's offside uh, so yeah unfortunately it won't count it's good into play and yeah he was just offside um after when camps played it through i mean the lines are never accurate because they they're always like slightly after it hits it for some reason but yeah he was he was offside there and o'donovan oh, it's a good little finish though um could have got a second maybe on a hat trick but no yeah not to be uh yet so at this point uh we look quite comfortable i'm gonna make some subs i'm gonna bring on bring on shocker for kelly I'll bring off pots for can I yeah I'll bring on bring off pots for Madden no I can swap him with Texera um and I'll put yeah him that side uh I can bring on around Keen Kavanagh for Craig no yeah that'll do um so yeah I'm just doing that I have faith in you it's got two good reactions can we make it three for three ew Key and Kavanagh's not having that, but um, yeah, still decent reactions. Uh, so yes, looks like we should ride this out. Rogers with the kit is going to find Ronan Finn. O'Connor, great tackle, Key and Kavanagh, and Camps has just cleared against Shocker. But uh, oh, and Shocker's won that. Oh no, he hasn't. Tal, Ronan Finn, O'Connor <sighs> should have half the deficit. Mikey Drennan. Boyle, Kavanagh, Camps. Go on, Shocker! Ooh, just wide unlucky. But yeah, we're, we're creating opportunities even at 2 up. And it's a great tackle there. What, who was that? Was that Kavanagh and Camps? Gets it to Shocker. O'Donovan. Good save. Yeah, no highlight for a couple of minutes. Just looks like we're just going to hold this out for the win. It is. So we've won 2-0 at Telag Stadium. Really good, solid win. Um, I haven't been following the Longford. Oh, Longford won. Oh, my God. <sighs> God, they're... Yeah, to be fair to them, they're doing pretty well. Um, yeah, they got six wins out of seven. So that's not bad. Uh, sorry, that's seven wins out of eight now. And they the only people they couldn't beat was uh, yours truly. But yeah, Sharma Weber's getting a one-all draw against Bray, who, yeah, they were in our league last year, so that's a really good result for them. So yeah, as I said, they're doing much better. Um, so yeah, that was until a bit. Uh, so yeah, this is where I'm going to wrap up the episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed this good win. Uh, oh, I haven't gone through the, um, I was going to let you go without going through the international results, and they have been a couple. So, in, well, last year, mainly. Uh, no. Yes, well, I'll go through the Kuwait. Well, we were lost to Kuwait in a friendly. This was an awful game. I wasn't really paying attention. I was a bit disappointed after the Germany game. Uh, but yeah, Reda Al Marjob. <laughs> Reda Al Majrob. With the only goal of the game, so it was a bit disappointing. But yeah, the under, under 19s. Did they play a game? No, yeah. The under 19s, we've been drawn. Uh, well, we haven't been drawn. We'd already been drawn who were playing, but now we've got the fixtures for them. Uh, they're in May. Uh, against Cyprus, Holland and Ukraine so they'll be very difficult games um, and they are like home and away are they? Oh, I didn't know that I, I thought they were all in one country but anyway uh, that's what we were facing then we uh, lost 2-0 to Moldova even bugger as I referred to him as um, getting two goals and yeah they t completely dominated us we weren't playing that badly but yeah Moldova played really well credit to them under 21s uh, we beat Luxembourg 3-1 Hoban, Bern and Hayhurst with the goals, poorly with the penalty for uh, Luxembourg. Um, so yeah, not much to say. We've been drawn in that group as well. Yeah, we've been we've got Iceland, Germany, Ukraine, Russia, and Azerbaijan. So yeah, that, that seems like an okay group. We should be able to beat Iceland, Azerbaijan, and possibly Ukraine. Russia, 
be between us and Russia um, for the second place, I should assume, behind Germany. Although, yeah, Ukraine, Germany and Russia are all three good teams, and I'd say we are too. So that might be, yeah, quite tough, just like last time. I think you have to finish in the top two to even have a chance. So, um, yeah, that's going to be pretty difficult. Um, but, yeah, we should do okay. Uh, in terms of the main squad, we beat Georgia 3-0 um, in our next Euro qualifiers game. So, yeah, we had to get back on track after those disappointing losses to Germany, Scotland and Poland. Sean Kavanagh, Aidan McGeady and Shane Long with the three goals. we got Gibraltar up next, so we should win that. And then, yeah, these will be the th key three games, so Scotland, Poland and Germany there, which are happening around about now in real life. Um, so, yeah. Uh, wait, no, no, we're in... No, yeah, we're in that We're in that game right now. We're in around that Georgia game. Scotland just played Gibraltar and Ireland. I think Ireland just played Poland. So, yeah, um, they're obviously not in the same order as um, in real life. Yeah, so in real life we're around March now. It's, it's April Fool's Day today. Oh, that reminds me. I did. Uh, I was in the, on in the game on first of April, which was I don't know. It will still be on my inbox. Um, f football manager Sports Interactive played a trick on me. They uh, it said um, I'll just show it to you. Um, I just think this is, a, this is pretty funny to show you. Here we go. Okay. So, in a display of incredible generosity, the Shamrock Rovers board have decided to award you the sum of region of 500 to spend on players' new stadium. It said, if you want to accept, heck, accept, I clicked the and it came up with April Fools. And it's sadly, this proved to be an April Fools find out from Torch Interactive. So, it is actually April Fools' Day today, and it was on the game. I'm not sure whether it was, whether that's a coincidence, or maybe it had to be both. But, yeah, um, I think that was hilarious. So, yeah, uh, Sports Interactive playing tricks on me, but... There you go, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. A good 2-0 solid win against Dundalk. I shall join you perhaps for that Gibraltar game. Probably not. I, I, I'm kind of sticking to Shamrock games now uh, as it stands. But yeah, it'll probably be, I don't know, somewhere around here. Drogheda maybe, maybe some patties, I don't know. But until then, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, click the like button. If you have any questions, comment, and if you want to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button. I've been the FM Gaffer, and I'll see you guys next time.